Hey, Jason. Hi, Aja. What's on your mind today? So I've been thinking, what exactly do we do with these agents once we've built them? Like, how do we ship and deploy these things? I can't exactly expect people to download a notebook and install API keys and stuff. Like, I've got my AI-powered cooking school. I can't expect my future chefs to figure out how to install notebooks and API keys and stuff in order to get their video cooking lessons. That would be a terrible user experience. That would be a very terrible user experience. It's difficult for them, and the probability of a liquid plus keyboard incident is way too high. So we need to ship it another way. Yeah, but like, how? It feels like everything is a chatbot right now. Either text chat or voice chat, but it feels like every AI app is interacting with users via natural language chatting. Well, for a lot of situations, multi-turn text chat or voice chat makes sense. Customer service is actually a really good example here. People expect to have a multi-turn conversation to resolve customer service issues. Ordering a pizza is another example, I guess. Getting to answers to simple or complex questions is often easiest with chat. Okay, so we could ship an agent with a chat interface on our website or in our mobile app. That could be text chat or voice chat. I guess that's one way to ship an agent and get it into production, but that doesn't really work for my AI-powered cooking school. Why wouldn't it? I want to learn to make, and then you generate the lesson. Jason, think bigger. I want to proactively suggest lessons based on what we've learned about the user, including their dietary preferences, what lessons they've done previously, how those lessons went, and what foods are in season where they live, and maybe like any seasonal celebrations. And I want to have the ability to push a button and just get the groceries associated with the next lesson. And I want all of that to work automatically when the user logs in before they even chat with anything. How do I ship something like that? How do I ship that kind of agent? Well, in that case, you may treat your AI agent just like any other service in your code. You wrap it in code and call it like a function, potentially passing in relevant context you have about the user, or passing an identifier so the agent can generate the appropriate context itself and then prompt the LLM. And you can do that when the user logs in and you render their homepage. Okay, I'm following, and at this point, I'm just treating my AI agent as basically another service in my application, the generate next lesson service. Exactly. This is application architecture 101, encapsulation and services. AI does just keep coming back to software development, doesn't it? Pretty much. So what if I know that my generate next lesson prompt or agent has pretty high latency, longer than most people would want to wait on a single page load? It is generating customized step-by-step -step AI cooking or AI-powered cooking videos after all. I probably don't want to run that on user load or user login every time and make folks wait for the videos to finish generating before they can do anything else. <laughs> it would not be great. But you could probably run any calls to an agent or an LLM asynchronously or non-blocking for most of your use cases. If it takes a really long time, you could even ask the AI agent to generate the next lesson well in advance and just store the results in the user profile. Then when the user logs in, you just need to render the agent's cached response that you already have. And you could generate that maybe on a scheduled nightly job. This is all making perfectly good sense. I guess I hadn't thought about the fact that my code can call an AI agent without there being a user-initiated chatbot situation going on first. Yep. Your program can treat an AI agent like any other API or service your program interacts with. You should carefully analyze the risks to decide what evaluation you need on the agent's responses and whether human in the loop is appropriate for your specific use case. But at the end of the day, the AI agent is just code and you can wrap it and treat it like any other code in your program. This is all making really good sense, and I suppose that means that an AI agent can call other AI agents. Yep. Usually another AI agent would be wrapped as a tool for your agent's call. For your AI cooking school, you could have a grocery ordering agent that takes care of finding the right ingredients, even creates a shopping list, and makes substitutions. And my generate next lesson agent could use that grocery ordering agent as a tool to order groceries and then possibly have them delivered if the user has told us ahead of time that they want us to take care of that for them. Exactly. So abstracting a bit, I can think of an AI agent as a service that humans can interact with via natural language and computers can interact with as well. I think that's a good logical architecture to start with, yeah. So I'm gonna go do some coding and actually add all these features we just talked about to Auntie Aja's AI cooking school. And I'm super excited about this. It's gonna be so cool. That's cool. And for those who are listening in, we've posted some links for how you can get started with all these fun methods as well. And with that, Jason and Naja signing off. 
Happy prompting. Happy prompting. <laughs>